Okay, guys, so I'm going to trade the rotation again today. Uh, okay, let's point a look. So there is my entry point. Which is, let's get a new mouse. Forty one is my bear with me, guys. Why I just put in some orders? We'll be trailing this up in just a sec. Uh, one more. All right. Okay, so we're at two minutes past seven. And what we're doing is it's a continuation on from yesterday where I was trading the rotation. So that goes under there. And what I'm doing is I am just moving. Oh, look at that. You say that? That's how she wakes up every morning. It's like Hollywood in this household. Because they do, don't they? When you ever watch a Hollywood film and they wake up in the morning, the women are all glamorous. The hair's all done. The makeup's perfect. You know, and the men get up and they're all nice and refreshed and invigorated. I wake up, I look like I've just fell out of a skip. I mean, bloody hell. Right. Sorry. Okay. Now, as that price increases, it gives us, you can either leave the targets as is, which reduces the risk, or you can increase them. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to leave one there. We want to leave that one at the top. And we're just going to pierce these ones out. Just see if we can get a little bit extra juice in the tank. And if you see that grey line, that doesn't allow me to move the price up any. So I'll just have to wait a little bit. So this is where we need to get. So we'll see if we can now get a, a better price again. What we're doing is, it's just a way of getting a better price with, oh, bloody hell. Waiting for the quick re rotation of the market. And that's all we do. We're just trying to get a quick rotation. So, I think what I'll do is just uh, make life a bit interesting and a bit easier. We want to put in a fib extension just here. And this will mark out my targets for me. Nice and simple. One up there. I'm going to work to the maximum target of 127.6. There we are. Nice. So as I drag up the price. <clears throat> We'll see because this is our initial point, and then I put a point to point here. Take that up to five minutes so I can see it. Okay, I just put a, a little target line in here. This one, Oops. 
that's roughly where I wanted to go. Uh, there was a big sell off on this yesterday. And it's kind of been continuing on. But here we go. But what we're doing is we're trailing up behind this, just like a, a candle, the two candles behind, just to get a better price. That's all we're doing. But with the DAX, you've got to be a bit careful, a bit box clever. It's a, it's a bit of a brutal market at times. As long as you treat it with a bit of respect, it's fine. Okay. And this situation here is the exact reason why I'm, I am changing how I'm doing this. Because if I did not manage this trade, this would have taken me out by now. And that's not something we want now, is it, boys and girls? It could well be coming into play about now. Right. Okay, okay, okay. How are we going to trigger? Now, watching this on a minutes chart, while enjoying the coffee from the lovely Winky, because we all know Scruffy likes a coffee, we're about to find out. We're in. So the idea now with this momentum is for it to continue down, and thank you very much, it hasn't. But we shall see. If you look at this, I know it's a minute chart, but the makeup the candles work kind of the same way, regardless of time frame. They're just stronger the higher up you go. When when you sort of micro trading on a minute chart like this, it is a bit difficult because a lot of it can be noise, which is why you're seeing me pull up behind. And the idea is we we just looking for a a quick profit and that is what this sort of system and plan is all about it is just quick profit it's it's not something you can do all day you literally want to get in get paid get out and that is it fortunately with the dax because it moves a bit and it can Kind of shift 10, 20 pips pretty quick. You can do this once a day, like I say, it's um, 10 past 7 on the morning on the 9th of January. Uh, uh, 9th of January. I definitely haven't had enough coffee this morning, boys and girls. Uh, but then again, if you saw yesterday, uh, we had a jolly old night last night because uh, yesterday was spectacular. And the reason why I'm doing this again, um, just so that you can see it's not a fluke. Um, I had, had a message yesterday. Uh, she said, ah, you can't do that every day. Uh, don't get me wrong, guys. It wasn't a bad message. Uh, wasn't a good one either, but same old thing. It's just people being people. I just thought to myself, well, I'll be doing the morning call anyway, and sort of between seven up past seven, I'm reading through to see what I'm going to do. I'll just pop this on the screen and see see what happens. Um, 
and here we are, it's playing out. It's just took out the first target. Needs to get down into the next one. And then I'll start looking to pull this into break even. And if it knocks the others out, so what? Okay, they did quite well. You know. Uh, and, and after yesterday's performance, that is yesterday's profits. Um, because I had a spectacular day yesterday. And this is just adding into it. So, come on. Down you come. Down you come. Just want you to knock one out. Uh, and then we risk free. And we're pretty much done for the day. How about you guys? I had half get a lot bloody chesty and snotty on the morning. Is that because I was getting old? Hey, look, see, see that? She's wandering around in the background with no clothes on. Let, let, let's, find, let's find something out. Here, yeah. Come here. Want you? Well, I do want you, actually. Yeah, you can take that off. But be careful, the camera's on. It was on last night as well. I told you, you fat fuck son of a bitch. Never touch me like that again. Let go of my ball. Shut up. Pamela Anderson's got nothing on us. Oi. Come here. Yeah. Look. Can you see? You can't see. Come here, you sexy bitch. Well, you know, like I made a lot of money yesterday. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of money yesterday. We were celebrating like there was no tomorrow. In fact, it was almost party in like 1999. Oh, dear. <laughs> what do you mean, old thing? <sighs> Stick it into Google. It's a great song. I know what it is, but well, no, you do. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I haven't finished yet. We were discussing an important thing and not sex tapes. That's for a Saturday night. Maybe. Yeah. I offered her a lot of money yesterday to wear something. And you know what? She said. No. You bitch. <laughs> <sighs> Back to the day job. No, sorry, guys. From the moment we wake up to the moment. Uh, I pass out, we enjoy our life. And that's what this is all about. We enjoy our life. Now this morning, as you can see, this is rattling into target. Uh, nicely sorted, traded in front of you, pretty much live. I'll have this up this morning. Uh, there we go. Head runner. Okay. It's risk free. It's already paid handsomely. Are we ready to go? That's about as annoying as it gets, guys. When it gets that close to target and then steps away. It really is infuriating. But um, we shall see. But what I'm going to do is, because you should always be paid for your efforts, even if it's only a little bit. So we're going to drop them down to the top of that candle. Hey, hey, hey. Well, someone's just ticked off. That one there. Um, that one there. That's it. Good as gold. They are done. That should have done me. There we go. Bloody hell. Well, I was never a computer genius. Um, computer decided to reset at the worst time. Now, if you ever saw a video a while back about the way I have my computer set up, 
there's a couple of important things that I have on the desk. You know, obviously coffee's one of them. My toys are another one. Lovely toys, I really do. Play with them all the time. But I have my two main screens here that I monitor on. But I also have a tablet come big thing here on a separate internet connection that runs on its own and it's for the exact reason as to what's just happened because if the internet goes down at a crucial moment or in this case the computer decided that it was time to reset itself because stupid here hadn't pressed the postpone button it means I can still watch the charts at a crucial time. So that is why I have it laid out the way that it is. Uh, I know it sounds a bit silly doing that belt and braces, but what you got to remember is this is my job. If this fails, I can't work. It's like you turning up to a shop and snapping the key in the shop door. You can't get in the shop, you can't trade very simple okay anyway um, so what's happened in the meantime not a great deal um, it has come down onto the the line that I pre-marked um, this little bad boy here uh, so quite happy with that get rid of that so now we're working on the fib extensions and the fib extensions are just from up there to there we have put the last target as a trail point at 161.8 just to see if we can get anything out of it. All the others have paid out. Uh, so the rules in place have worked. Um, you'll, if you're interested, um, you'll see a banner, Scruffy Squad. All the details are in the comments. Um, there's a video of the rules of this within that and it's not bad it's not bad originally when i was when i got hold of the strategy um didn't work it was just a coin toss and it's it still is a coin toss to be honest um and it's great for trading mechanically without putting much thought into it but you've got to be a bit careful with it because any mechanical system, it's like the moving average crossover system, all of that sort of thing. They don't take into account an overall market condition. So whenever you do that, you are basically just pulling a slot machine out. Um, however, if you've got a basic knowledge of the markets and you can see an overall bias in one thing and another, then it's a good systematic way to enter a trade and manage positions out which is what i've been doing this morning um it's literally a hit and run strategy um a little bit better than scalping shall we say yes you see me monitor on a minute chart and that is more just so that i can micro manage it but the actual decision comes from a higher time frame. Okay? And it's a little bit like talking of higher time frames. Um, yesterday I touched on the DNA of a trade. And as you can see, this one is still paying me quite handsomely. It paid me very, very well yesterday. But it was all based on a bigger trade. And having to wait for this drive to get up. I mean, that was my actual point of no return up here, this red line. So between that red line and this red line was a trading zone that I marked out. And then I wanted to do day trades, carving money off as it went, waiting for the slam. Here's the slam, it's paid me very well and it has paid me royally this morning. As we can see just here so I have definitely had a great great month we said nine days in 
Uh, I said yesterday I don't have to work the rest of the month. I don't, you know. But don't be dazzled by these big numbers. Yes, they are spectacular. They're really good. It took a long time to get here, guys. Um, it's not something that happens overnight. And it's just madness to think that you're going to press a couple of buttons and you're going to make sort of eight grand in a day. Um, no. You've got to build up your account. It took me a long time to build up my account to be able to take this. Um, but that's not to say you can't make a wage. And I'll be brutally honest with you guys. When, you, when I say these planks, and they're sort of saying you're going to make £10,000 a month just buy my book. Uh, I was watching one on Amazon the other night, and it came up saying, oh, I've sold this, that, and other. I've dealt with Amazon for 15 years. You know, I put over a million pounds through their books. And do you know how much we made? Sod all. Nothing. You know, yes, we did make money, but I mean, in real terms, we didn't make a lot because Amazon absolutely crucify you in fees. Um, the customers treat you like utter dirt because they have a policy of if the customer doesn't like it, they automatically give you the money back. And they don't give a monkeys about the money going back because it doesn't come out of their bank account. They take it directly off the seller. Amazon have nothing to do with it. Customer says, I don't like it. Uh, Amazon automatically give the money back. That's the end of it. And there's no arguing with them. Um, we pulled out of Amazon. It was an utter nightmare. They're an awful company to deal with. Um, they have got absolutely no regard for the third party sellers at all. They, they treat you like utter dirt. A customer can be caught thieving. We caught numerous thieving customers. Amazon didn't do a thing. We had to prosecute them ourselves. And they just don't care. And if that thief complains, the seller gets into trouble. Um, they're just horrible. Awful, awful. And then when I see these gurus on there saying, oh, I'm going to show you how to make 100000 per month on Amazon. They're idiots. They're living in cuckoo land. You know, and they're as bad as these muppets you ding dong give it to me again oh make it stop sorry i haven't had one in for a while uh, god they, they wind me up i sat in one on saturday morning i'll not say who he is because i'm not really into sort of the name and shame and thing for a number of reasons you, you, you're kind of not allowed to in this day and age although i seem to get a kick in quite a bit no one seems to bloody protect me anyway um three hours sitting in you, you'll have seen him um he, he, he's like this all the time in his trading den teaching his gardener how to trade three hours in that seminar what a load of crap, you know, it was utter rubbish. And then to say it's a one-off special for 10 people, two grand for his course, normally eight. Yeah, of course it is. You know what he told you? He told you that he was wealthy. He told you that he had a big house. He told you that he met Richard Branson once. He went to Bahamas for his holidays. He traded once in a helicopter. Did he tell you anything about trading in that three hours? Well, he said the markets move because money is rotational. That was good. What else did he tell me? He told me that there's a thing called a moving average. I thought that was quite good. And that you can use a 200 moving average for a bias on a day. I thought that was amazing. And he told me he bought a Lamborghini. And I was really interested. I was a bit disappointed. It wasn't green was black but he bought it anyway and he told me what a pip was and he told me how to pay him two thousand pounds in easy chunks then he showed me his house again then he showed me a glossy video about how he helped build a school 
and then he showed me how to set up a direct debit to pay him. It was a great three hours. I was enthralled. Yeah. Sadly, my friends, the dreams like that don't exist. The only dream you can have is the one you make for yourself. All right? I often tell you that the charts and the markets are easy. They are. They really are. Um, the hard part is you. And it's just having to put the work in to understand the mechanics of the charts. Because once you've got your head round them, they're not that difficult. What is difficult is knowing when to stop. Because over trading is your account killer. It's knowing how to be clever with your risks. Because if anything, sort of risk management is key. Now, risk management is a subject on its own. I'll, I'll not go into too much detail. I'm just having a bit of a ramble while we watching this last candles play out. But risk management is not about just where you place your stock. It's about how you use your money to create more money. That's what risk management is. And that's from my business background. Because if you can spend seven quid and make a tenner, you have made a good return on your product. But in the trading world, if you risk seven pound to make three, it's frowned on. And that always amazes me because sometimes you have to trade in an inverse risk reward. And I know the trolleys will jump all over it, but trust me, until they trade live in front of you and trade profitably, like what I show you, I won't listen to a word they say because one, they'll have not been in business and two, they don't know the mechanics of economics. All right. A stop and risk is only there to protect you. It is not your basis of a trade. All right. The whole makeup of the trade is. So you need to know what the direction is. You need to know what the breadth of the movement is going to be and then you have to make a calculated choice as to where you're going to get in all right that is what makes your trade all right and then it has whatever the reward is on the end of it all right whether it's a dollar or a hundred or whatever your risk side of it is where you are going to get out because you are wrong in other words you've read the market wrong and this is what protects you because the way I trade is I go into a trade knowing it's going to win. All right. I know it sounds quite arrogant and pretentious in a, in a way, but I'll have done my homework on it first. And I, and I have a good idea of which direction it's going. And as long as I've got the direction right, it'll forgive a bad entry and it will forgive a stop loss. My stop is there just to protect me. That is it. Whereas I see too many people, and this is how the gurus try and teach you. However, the gurus who try and teach you don't really make any money, you know, because none of them will trade live real time in front of you. Hang on, she's got no clothes on. It's almost sex tape two there, wasn't it? God, there's a thought that you guys weren't running around your head, isn't it? Hello. <laughs> yeah. How much would it take to do a sex tape? No amount of money. No amount of money. All right. Apparently there's no amount of money. You're right, there isn't. Because there's a few people, there's no amount of money I'll teach. <laughs> and I've said that before as well, and I bloody mean it. Because believe it or not, they've actually come back to me and offered me quite a lot of money. And I said, go away. Don't want it. Never want it. Um, even if I was starving in the street, I wouldn't take it. Um, I have a, a bit of a, a, a streak in me that is, you only ever burn me once. You know. 
and that is it. Um, and that's why I have a thing about the, the trolleys and one thing and another. Um, I, I don't understand it. I really don't. You know, if I don't like somebody, I'll look them in the eye and I'll tell them I don't like them. And I'll be quite brutal with that. And anybody who knows me knows I'm exactly like that. But they always know where they are with me. You know, I have no middle ground. It's either right or it's wrong. Simple as that. But I, I was kind of brought up that way. Uh, anyway, sorry, I digress. We were discussing risk before I was properly distracted by the winker. It does distract me all the time, you know. You know it's great. <laughs> the only thing is we're old now. You know, I've got this great skill set for the bedroom and one thing and another. Oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> she wouldn't let me anyway, so never mind. Sorry. It's too early, I haven't had any coffee yet. Miss is sort of taking a bit of time. But what I was saying about risk is don't be stupid with it. Don't ever be stupid with it. You know, I'm not saying if you've got a risk of three ticks, your stop is 500 ticks away. That's madness. You know, that, that's just stupid. You might as well just give the market your money. What I'm saying is if you know what you're doing, just hide your stop well out of the way. All right. And also if you know what you're doing, when the market turns against you, you should be able to see it. And if you can see the conditions changing, get out. And that's it. And that's why you hear me say I have two stops, because I do. I have one where I reevaluate what I'm going to do. All right. And once I've reevaluated it, if I have a, a thought that the market is turning against me, that's it. I, I'll just pull the plug. A little bit like now, I'm watching this. I'm going to pull that stop onto the 25% mark. Just down there. Because the market is running against me. In fact, I'm going to pull it now. Just give it half where we are. Right. And if it gets over that line, I am going to pull. <laughs> because the market rotation is turning, but you need to have a little line in the sand, and that's what that little line there is. Stop is still out the way, just in case it wicks up and comes back. Uh, but as soon as I see that body move above that, I am going to pull the plug on it. And then that'll be it for the day. And as you can see, it's dancing around. It hasn't quite decided what it's wanting to do just yet. Um, the candle prior is saying that it could possibly be going down. Uh, if you don't understand the makeup of why I'm saying that. It's because the body's at the bottom and the wick's at the top. There's been no testing to the bottom. Everything has just been pushing down in the last part of that candle. And the market moves down. And because I want to kind of end this off, we shall see. Happy days, happy days. So I, hope, I know I was kind of rambling a little bit there while I was watching this. And I hope it kind of makes a little bit of sense is, is to what I say about risk. Now, I do think you should have good risk rewards. You know, you certainly need them. But when you're intraday trading, it's very difficult to get a three to one. In fact, it's really difficult. Because in order to do it, just by nature of, how far a market will move within an hour is your stops are so tight. Wicks take you out all the time. 
and they, they just well it's just death by a thousand cuts and I, I, I went through a long period of time where I tried to do that you know try and pick your tops and your bottoms and it's not even impossible you know well it's not impossible of course you can do it but it, you, you can't do it consistently day in day out hour after hour it, it's re mega hard and because indicators are lagging by the time you figure out you're at the top or the bottom it's quite rare that they all coincide together and a lot of the time it's just blind luck so you often see me trading with no indicators at all um, there we go game over and the reason why is i do use indicators and i use them in a different way they're not triggers for me they're just road maps to the trade okay um levels price and trading what i see is how i trade and i trade very successful oh you put your clothes back on now have you all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> enjoy yourself. You really do. You've got to enjoy yourself every single day. So there we go, boys and girls. Um, it is ten to eight. Job's done. Finished. A little bit of management of the trade. There is the results. From this morning, uh, pretty darn good. Uh, now, if you're working and you're looking for a simple, simple system, that's almost set and forget. Because I could set and forget this at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, it's not a bad place to start. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I've got the morning watch to do, which I'm, I'm going to do now, and. I'll do it all again tomorrow. So remember, guys, do what you love, and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.